Hey guys, guess what we're doing today? Any guesses? Now assuming you haven't read the title, you might be looking at this elephant in the shop and asking, how can you ask us to guess when there's just so much to do? I'll give you a hint. Read my lips. All right? So before we get into that, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the last episode and what we did and what you're probably thinking as we were doing what we did. Now, if you haven't seen the episode, stop this video, check it out, and then come back and watch this video. There'll be a card up above. So as we were doing what we were doing, you might have been thinking to yourself, this guy's off his rocker. Why is he so cut happy? He just, he won't stop. He's cutting everything apart. Well, there's a reason behind the madness, and I'm gonna show you what that reason is. Right here. See this mangled mess? Now I'll bring it up a little bit closer. You can inspect it for yourselves. There's a previous repair done where they slapped new rockers over the old ones. And you can see all this rust in between as well as pinholes. And it just, it was literally mush. And this is just a small section of the rocker. There was more. The scrap pile is enormous. We basically cut back as far as we needed to until we reached good material and then which was here and the back wall and that brings me to what we're doing today and that's the floors so we need to replace all the missing areas here it's not gonna be a Flintstone mobile but before we got to this stage we had to in the last video set the rockers today I set the door to make sure that all the gaps are good and the other thing we have to do later on is lengthen the door, but that's not gonna interfere with what we need to do in here. We have to make sure that everything's squared up where it needs to. The two body sections are fixed in place, they've been bolted down to the chassis, so none of that is moving. We've connected the front tunnel section to the rear with a new piece, and that back wall area, we actually moved it back rearward in the car a little bit more. And that was done so we could fit two bucket seats in the back. If you ever seen the uh, early 60s Chrysler 300, awesome concept. Buckets all around for everybody. So that's what I want to kind of replicate with this car. We're not building a 300, we're building kind of a tribute car with the best of the design elements of the 300 in this car. So like I mentioned that package tray or that rear wall and the package tray had to be moved back to allow for the seats to fit and the wheel houses, we had to shorten them a little bit. See that? About an inch there to increase the width in the back so the seats would fit. Now you might be saying, why did you go through all that extra work to change that sheet metal around when you could have left the frame and wheelbase the original length? Well, the answer is simple. The exterior of the car, well, we wouldn't be able to reproportion it the way I want to. So there we go. Now I'm gonna throw one more little nugget at you guys who are just tuning into this build. We're going to be lowering the roof on this car. The area over the rear window is quite high. It had a huge kind of crown. Uh, it didn't look right. So we need to lower that roof. And we're not going to do it in a traditional sense where we cut the pillars and lower the top. We're going to take that whole windshield surround and lean it back about two inches, giving that windshield a little bit more rake. And that'll drop the top quite nicely. One of the reasons I don't want to cut the windshield is these things are practically unobtainium. You can get them, but they're not cheap. And to ship it here to Canada, uh, I'd have to sell my left kidney. So we're going to retain the original shape of the glass, which I'm fine with that. Lay the whole thing back a little bit, two inches-ish. We'll see. It's going to be a little bit of work, but it can be done. And by lowering the roof, it's going to minimize that radius over the back. It's gonna be interesting. <laughs> but before we get into that, we're gonna get out these floors. And that protractor, that's only there as a looks good thing. All right guys, so here we have two blanks of 18 gauge steel sections, floor sections that I've just finished cutting out. We need to form these up to fit into these spaces. 
Uh, that one's a little more complicated than this one, so I'll start with this one, get it in, and then we'll move on to the back one. And the reason I'm choosing 18 gauge, in case you're wondering, these floor sections here are 18 gauge. There were some sections of 16 and 14 gauge, and as well as some 1 8, these channels here. Uh, they added all that extra strength for this door that was back here. They didn't want the door sagging or moving around. They wanted it to close nice, and it did close really well. But we no longer, well, since they have a, don't have a door there, uh, we don't need all that extra weight or all that extra structure. Uh, this door, this post that was here, we've trimmed it down, put it on a diet. Here it is right here. And basically got rid of the hinge mounts and all that stuff that was necessary for that back door. And this is going to be located eh, somewhere in here. Uh, we'll do that later on. I keep tangenting because there's just so much to do on a project like this. So you need to focus. Focus, Nick. So I'm going to mark this up a little bit more, create all the bend lines, we'll go to the brake and start bending. Check this out. Look at that. That's a seam sealer. It's truly amazing what you find when you cut a car up. That should be good right there. Yeah. Okay, so there's a little our first little offset, right there. This is going to be sitting on the existing floor. I'll punch holes there. And uh, if anything, we're going to trim it back a little bit. I do want to touch it up. It's not sitting flat yet. And I need it to sit flat. So I'll just put it in this way and give that a little extra bend. Done. It's soft enough, small enough, that I can roll up this end into the, into the tunnel area. Right there. Slightly bend up. Good. One more bend. It's only because we put this in underneath that it pinched down and it flattened it a bit. So now we have to bend, rebend that second leg back up. We want this pan to sit level. We don't want it to be rising up and dipping down and all that stuff. So, okay. Next step is to roll up these areas to come up into the tunnel and pick the tunnel up. We can't get it in the brake because I want a nice soft radius. And if I stick it in this way, it'll create a bend across here. Not what we want. So we have to actually do this by hand. So I'm kind of happy this is only 18 gauge. Otherwise we'd have to set up something a little bit more elaborate than this with the radius I want. Slide it in. 
pinch it. Good. Okay. Yeah, that's all we need. This tail might go away. And there we have our radius. And I may have to adjust it, I'm not sure yet. We're gonna fit this up in the car first. Let's get this one bent. See, longer flange, more mechanical advantage. I can basically get that up like that. And this one here, same thing. Good. I'm going to take this corner off and put it over here. That's the way it works out. So the way this works is this floor section sits on the inner rocker and the outer rocker sits on top of the uh, floor section. It's good. Need to put that there. It's looking good. It's really close right now. I need to make a little adjustment at the front, change this radius because this is on an angle, the tunnel, and my bend is a little too straight, so we'll take care of that. This will get squished down. That's looking good. Lots of material there. We're gonna cut a lot of that away. And we're close. Some of this will have to be pushed in once we start pinning it. Uh, yeah, I'll just work it in. Let's make this adjustment and Get some screws into this. Okay. We're good. That's pulled in quite nicely. We've got everything pinned. We can mark some corners to take off there. Take this excess off through here, as well as that amount right there. Done. Now this piece up here, this is, I'm not throwing it out yet. Um, as you can see, we need to create a whole bunch of reinforcement pieces to go inside from between the inner rocker and the floor. That was a floor, that's the inner rocker. These are the little gussets we have to create, channels we have to create. Once we know where the seats are gonna go, then we'll take and reinforce those areas to make sure that we're not sitting on sheet metal you know, and the seat's wobbling around when you're driving. We can't obviously bolt to the frame because the frame is separate from the body. So, um, this is gonna be done at a later time. Right now, we're gonna get the main floor sections in, get the seats in, mark all that, and then create all that. I'm keeping this as a reference to replicate the kind of channels, or the channels, structural pieces that they had. Now this one is, a lot more complicated than what we just dealt with there. What we're going to do is create the little offsets in the sheet metal, same as we did on the front piece. So one across the front, one across the edge, so they'll sit on the tunnel. And then we can go ahead and bend that up. On the back side, I have marked an area that we need to bump up to accommodate for that there. All right.
my tipping wheel will run an offset, but with 18 gauge running a straight line, it's a little bit easier to get the panel in the brake and bend it that way. Just thinking about that little bump, we can cut a hole in the sheet metal and make a cap, or we can do some sheet metal stretching. I'm curious, can we stretch it out by hand? I know a lot of you guys watch to get little tricks and tips. You don't have all the tools in the shop. So I think we're gonna do it by hand and I'll show you a relatively simple way to do something like this. Can you guys see the smoke? Yeah, it's just right above my head. Good. Now, so that's actually the way it's gonna sit in the car. And this goes on the center cross member and that's gonna sit on the tunnel. We need to bring that up. But I think before we bring that up, we're gonna stretch out this, this um, bump. Okay, yeah, I'm trying to formulate a plan. Let's go. Okay, so what we have here is a chunk of steel. In this case, a piece of railroad iron, something heavy with a straight line on it and elevated from the floor. So let's just set it up like that. And we need to align our green lines on this edge and basically hammer the sheet metal down past and that'll create the stretch we need to raise that bump. Now we need to make sure that we hammer this out in the right direction. So this is the top, this is the back. I've created some center punch lines right there. Align those with our with our edge, and we're going to hold this. And very carefully, you're not going to be wailing on it just yet. We need to transpose the line that's underneath up on top, and I'll show you how we do that. I'm going to turn it a little bit this way. There, feel that. Close. We'll find out soon enough. You got to pay attention. I almost went the wrong way. Being that this is the top. We need to drive down, not this way. So that's okay. That's why we went carefully, slowly. Now I have a line I can go by. Align it. There we go. Now we go the right way. I'm not hitting anything in the center. The center doesn't have to be stretched. It's this material along the edge that stretches. Same thing as a dent. Usually when a dent occurs, you get bumped in the middle. The middle isn't really stretched. It's the material surrounding that's that bump.
with this, it's not looking too pretty just yet. Another way I could approach this is to create a band out of steel, the size I need, and drive down to that, create a hammer form. But I know I can clean this up, not going to take too much. These little things here, not a big deal. This will get hammered and dolly out, and we'll have a little pocket in a matter of a few minutes if I didn't stop and talk every single time. Just banged it out. So the other side will go faster. It's going to be deep enough. Let's clean this up. Okay, let's throw this in the wheel and just tidy up the perimeter a little bit. It's cleaning up quite nicely. Now we can go ahead and do the center. Touch that up a little bit. Just cleaning up the little walnuts. So I just finished this off with a 120, yeah, 120 grit flap disc, and uh, that should be it. Uh, we can't fit this yet. I need to create one more bend here, and we're gonna have to take a notch out of section for the frame uh, and bring that up. So uh, that is gonna be trickier. We can't do what we did here and pop it out because there's so much more material we gotta move. So that's, I'm happy with that, that's good. Now I want a soft radius here at the back, so we're just going to back that off. Come on. Okay. Soft radius. Clamp out of here. Okay, 
So you can see that it's not sitting low enough. What we're bumping on is this frame. So I need to take and readjust this area uh, to allow this panel to slide in. That's where the frame falls there. We're not going to be adjusting anything here. Just need to take this, this area and move it. If you think you're going to pop that the other way, the way it is, uh, think again. Uh, this corner is very strong the way it is. You're going to mangle the panel if you try doing what we did there. So I'm going to take and cut here, cut across here because there's way more material than what I need for that area, and we'll rebend it the other way. It's almost there. That. We need to slip this flange in between the two, the inner rocker and the outer rocker. Right there. Boom. That will roll down. That will roll down. Um, let's trim back a little bit more here. I won't need a quarter inch. Test fit 331. I'm kidding. In case some of you think I'm serious. Okay, that's looking good there. We need to bump this back. Ah, yeah, there we go. And, yeah, that looks good there. That'll come down. I think that's going to be it. Yeah, this has to come up. There we go. A little bit extra. There's a certain order that everything has to go in at. You can't just pile the sheet metal on top of each other. Everything's tied in. That's good. come together all right guys well that's it rear floor section in we have a little bump there with right now about a quarter inch clearance between the mount and that that's going to increase when we put the new bushings in into the car right now we have steel spacers every like located so that all the sections are lining up uh, this will be joined we'll have to create the beads in here and talking about beads uh, once i get the other side done i'll do that off camera get them installed mark out all the beads and then take the panels out trim them up create the beads and get them back in the car and that's going to be it for the floor we're going to have to do some more modifications back here for the seats i'd like to get the seats in and see how they look and that's that's going to be it for this episode 
But don't run away just yet because I'm going to show you what the whole floor looks like when it's uh, done. Almost done. We're just leaving on screws for now. All right. Cirque du Soleil time. Pretend I'm a human drone here and get an aerial view of the floor sections installed. So everything's pinned on screws, coming together quite well. We're still going to do a little bit of work back here, but that's going to be done when the seats are in. We've drawn the lines out for the beads, so all that's set to go. And uh, we're just about ready to pull them out. But before we do, I'd like to see if you guys can pick up on a change you made on the interior. I'll go nice and slow. Throw it down in the comments if you see something that looks different. Aside from new sheet metal and older sheet metal original sheet metal. Okay, let's get bead rolling. All right guys, so we have our floor pan section, the beads all illustrated. But before we can start creating any beads, we need to take and wheel this up. You heard me right. Why you have to wheel it up? We need to pre-stretch this material just a little bit so that when we create the bead, we have enough material to draw from for that area to go down and the panel maintain a flat surface. If we just created a bunch of beads, this panel will twist up a bit. And like I said, we want to maintain a flat surface. So go ahead and wheel up these panels. It might be easier said than done because we have areas that have already formed up. But let's see what we can do here. Put it in there. Now one little trick you can do to know exactly where to stop if you have trouble seeing the other side is run a little bit of masking tape and then the wheel will bump up against that. It won't go any further, but we'll just eyeball it today. It's going to deform a little bit because we're stretching. No problem. Our bead's going to be pressed downward. You might think it's counterintuitive intuitive because water sits in that bead. Okay, but if you bump it up, your floor, your carpeting is not going to sit very flat. Four, five, six, seven. One more, eight. Keep track of the number of passes. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can see the crown developing in this panel. And after we're done with our beads, it should return to a level surface. Three, Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. One, two. Okay, let's roll the beads. Before we go ahead and grab the real pieces and throw them in, I'm going to grab a scrap of 18 gauge, get it between the rollers here, and create a bead. One, two, three, four. I want to see how deep of a bead will look good in this case. It's actually not looking too bad. Yeah. All right, so there we go. Nice little bead. It's not too deep, but it's enough to create enough stiffness in this piece of 18 gauge, we don't get the plop, plop, plop in the floor. Uh, it potentially could do that after we weld it in. So this is gonna create a lot of strength. And even if you stand on it, you don't want that cushiony feel in the floor. It just doesn't, doesn't feel right. So this bee is gonna help us a lot. I'm gonna do one more run, just to make sure that we're on the right track. Pop it in here. Two, three, four. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do, right there. One, two, three, four. 
perfect. So there we go, replicated the second time, same depth, and uh, that's it. So this little piece, you can see it's already starting to curl up because we didn't pre-stretch, but I wasn't interested in keeping it flat. I just wanted to see how, much would, how deep of a bead we can create. And uh, that's it. So let's get the actual panel, stick it in here, roll it out. One, two, three. It was four turns, right? Bead roller engaged. Stop. Smidgen more. That's it, yeah. One, two, four. Okay, so that's our first bead. Looks good. Got, this is the back of the car, that's the front. We have our, I'll turn it this way for you guys. So we got the back of the car, we got the front, arrow pointing ahead. We're moving forward. So that looks really nice. Uh, we'll finish up the rest of the beads and the panels and we'll get them installed and bring you guys in. All right guys, well there's stage one complete. Four floor sections, formed up, fitted, bead rolled and installed. Mind you, they're only mounted on screws. Nothing's permanent yet. Stage two is gonna involve blowing everything apart, punching holes in all the panels for the plug welds, applying weld through primer for, between all the interfaces where the panels meet each other so we don't have any bare metal in those areas. And oh yeah, we need to create a hole there, there, and perhaps take out that triangle on each side. Because when I bring the seats in, that seat actually slides way back. So I'm not sure if the track is gonna interfere with those, uh, with that sheet metal. The front one's pretty straightforward. Just drop down with some brackets and pick up the structure underneath when it's done. But when it comes to the back seats, there's gonna be some finagling to get that seat in there. You'll see why when I get the seat up in place. Now we're only putting in the two driver's side seats, front and back. Uh, these things, I, I don't feel like lifting all four into place. Yeah, a little bit of weight there, but they're a really nice seat and you'll understand why I chose these seats when I bring them in. All right, here we go again. We're gonna do this in two steps. First step, lift with your back and not your knees. Step one, complete. Out of curiosity, I'm gonna see how much this thing weighs. Seventy-five pounds. Let's see what the health queen says. Health queen, yeah. I'm catching my breath. There we go. Vintage 1954 health queen body scale. It's made in Canada. You don't see that too often anymore. All right. Let's get these kind of situated this way. Oops. Up here. I'm going to zero the scale. It's about good right there. And we're going to try and lift this seat up up, up up here in such a way that we can see the dial. I don't know if it's possible. Uh, slides over a little more. Apologies for not being able to get you in on the action here, on the rotary action. Let's see what that says. Can we read upside down? Holy moly. 
Now, I'm gonna bring you guys in. Come on, can I do this two-handed? I don't wanna drop you guys. You guys won't like that too much. Okay, he's gonna have to wait. I'm trying to zoom in on the scale. Can you see it? 70, e. I'm blocking the light, I guess I'm blocking the light. There we are. That reads 75 pounds, maybe 76. Eh, not too bad. All right, so let's give uh, Special Effects 101 a try and get this 75 pound seat in the car. Not too bad. All right, that's looking good there. Looking very good. Um, I'm not exactly sure the orientation just yet. This is the second, maybe the third time in. Uh, first time was on a piece of plywood. Uh, I know that we had to do a little bit of uh, black magic with that back seat to make things work out. But if you can tell, these are very unique seats and will work out perfectly in this situation. Seatbelts are built in. We don't have to do anything with the hard top, shoulder strap, none of that. It's all right here. And we can all thank GM for supplying the seats for this project. Cadillac CTS. Now I've got one of the steering wheels. I'm gonna see if I can get the spline to line up sitting. Oh, that's close. No, not quite. Yeah. There we go. It's splined and it has a keyway and that has keyway has to line up. Now some of you might be sitting on your couch, some of you might be sitting in your office chair and some of you might be sitting in your front driver's seat of your car. And you might be looking down and saying, hey, uh, this seat is a little bit too far forward. Uh, yes and no. Yes, it is to give us enough room in the back. No, because this steering wheel is actually gonna move forward. Uh, this, is, this, this ring, is a monster. It's, I think, 18 and a half inches in diameter, way too big. We're gonna shrink it down. This one's not too bad. We're gonna put this one aside. There's another one that we have that came from with the package, and it's a lot worse. So we're gonna take and cut the ring off, re-roll a new ring at about 16 and a half, 17 inches, a little smaller, uh, six, we'll see. And we are gonna attach that bringing that steering wheel forward. Now this seat is set for my seating position and I'm a long guy. So for most people, this would be ahead a bit more, probably two inches more. And that'll give whoever's sitting behind the driver more room. The bottom is gonna come up a little bit and the back forward a bit, we'll see. But for now, I don't have a battery to hot wire it. Uh, I'm gonna jump up inside and see how it feels. And I'm not gonna make any vroom vroom noises, promise you. All right. Now, being a convertible makes it easy to get in. Headrest. Now we're sitting a little bit uh, off center. So we're gonna have to fix that by uh, adjusting the floor, which we just about finished. That's why nothing's welded yet. Uh, we based this on what was here, but from sitting in the seat, I'm actually sitting on a bit of an angle and a bit too upright, I think. Let's see if we can bring you guys in and see what you think about the seating position. So from down here, you can see how well things are fitting in. We will have to make little feet to drop down, pick up the floor. That's not a big deal. This side here is gonna to have to come up. And over here, you can see that the seat is sitting in that radius there. Uh, if we pick the front up, that'll help. Uh, we can, let's try that. Let's try that. See, like that. So then we can move the seat over like so. Uh, there we go, we're sitting up higher there. The only thing is we need to block up the front. And uh, if we have a two by four, I had a two by four, where'd it go? Two by four. Place this under here. Can I do this one-handed? Oh, there we go, that's not bad. So that, that helped a lot in terms of seating, the seat being pushed over a bit more towards the center. 
there's a lot that goes into planning uh, stuff like seating. You know, it's not just drop it in, bolt it down, and away you go. Uh, this got tighter. We can move back a little more. You can see a space here. That means that seat belt, this area here, needs to move back. So that package tray can move back. We're not stuck there. So let's jump up again and see how it feels. Now you get a chance to see what it's like being at Cirque du Soleil. Okay, so you are sitting basically where my eye level is, and you're looking out that front window, the front windscreen. Up there, that's the header of the window. So we're down quite a way. So we're going to have lots of room to bring it down to about there, okay? which is perfect. You're looking right through there. The steering wheel is going to change in diameter and come down a bit. And uh, we've got to get the horn ring back in. It looks funny without it. And down here, there's lots of leg room. Uh, we have room for pedal, gas pedal, brake pedal. It's an automatic. Uh, my feet, our legs are fully extended. I can actually move ahead a bit more. I've got lots of room here between my beer gut and the steering wheel. Uh, but like I mentioned, with that steering wheel ring being reduced in size, it's going to come in and up a bit. So that's going to help. It's a very, very spacious interior. And you can see what I'm talking about, the windscreen. The ViewSonic, Super Scenic, whatever they want to call it back in the day, about tilting the post back. Their, their justification for tipping the post back so I imagine that yellow upright there was a human, right? And if this post was upright, you wouldn't be able to see the human. But by leaning the post back, you can see that person, you see? But behind my fingers, <laughs> you can't see that vice grip. So like, what do you do? What we're gonna do is we're gonna lean this windshield back just a bit more, and hopefully uh, it'll give us a little bit better visibility. That protractor is there because it looks good. All right, I'm quite pleased with this actually. Okay, I just tried to rotate the seat a little bit more. Uh, can't do it, but if we raise that area up a little bit more, like, oops, I just lost what I gained. Uh, that'll help us in centering ourselves with the steering wheel. First person view, I think that's what they call it. Now let's take a look at the back seat. See, the back seat's in towards the center of the car, a little bit more than the driver's side. It's done for two reasons. One, we have a wheel well to contend with. That's why we narrowed it up a little. And sitting in the back, you'll get a better view out that front windshield. You won't be looking at somebody's head. Uh, I think Avanti, back in the day, set up their floor pan in such a way that the back seats were higher than the front seats. So the person in the back could look over the driver. Uh, not sure how that ever worked out. I've never ridden in an Avanti. Uh, I know how they had a very unique body style, but uh, that was one of their ways of uh, increasing visibility from the back seats. Our way, move the seat in towards the middle. We're gonna have a nice console come down the whole tunnel area, all the way to the front, up into the dash, and uh, keeping the dash stock as much as possible. Uh, we might include a GPS unit with a flip open display down here. We'll see, that, that's a ways away yet. Right now we need to fill some holes and uh, just make sure that everything is gonna work out with these seats. Yeah. Okay, let me jump out. See how far down that is? That's a long way down. 20, 30 centimeters maybe. Okay, we're down. You see the roof? That has to come down, it's way too high. We'll go with one piece glass. With that front door closed, you can see where it lands uh, in relation to the seat. We're gonna extend that front door rearward that way, about five inches-ish, and that's gonna help reproportion the entire side of the car to make it look, oh, we can do one more thing. I'm gonna give you guys an Easter egg. It's not Easter yet, but I'm gonna give you guys an Easter egg, just for fun. Give me a second. 
up we go. Okay. Okay guys, that's what it looks like with the back end on the car. There we go, so we have a bit of a gap here to fill and a tail light and a bumper missing. So that's gonna add some more length to the back. It is a bit stubby looking now, but she's gonna come out to about, about there. And we might even take, well, we'll do something with this bumper because it just feels like the back of this car goes on forever. So might do a little bit of a, something there but anyway uh, everything's lined up this is all original sheet metal a lot of this is going to be redone cleaned up there's a bunch of patchwork that was done here uh, don't need that because it's just metal over metal and you saw how that turned out uh, so we needed something to go by and this this helped us align uh, the back sections together the fin that's all going to join up through here this is a factory joint that they created so we cut just below that and up front here, this fin is gonna extend into, uh, probably into the door a bit. There we go. All right guys, so thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, let us know in the comments, hit the like button. And if you're new to our channel, hit that subscribe button. We have a lot more to go. As you can see, things are really shaping up. Didn't have to throw the back on, but I think it's gonna help everybody see where the project is going. It's, it's one thing looking at a drawing or a picture, but it's a whole other thing to see the car in its current state and where we're gonna take it. Thanks again and take care. Take care guys.